Welcome to the mobile communications class. We are going to start with a, an introduction about the evolution of mobile communications. The first version of mobile radio telephone being used in 1924 after two years telephone service in trains on the route between Hamburg and Berlin was approved and afforded to first-class travelers. Nine years later, in 1935, Edwin Armstrong demonstrated FM and has been primary modulation and has been the primary modulation technique used for mobile communication systems throughout the world. In 1946, that's during the Second World War, the fir in 1946, the first public mobile telephone service was launched in 25 cities across the United States. Only 543 users by Bell Labs. Early mobile systems used sig single high-power transmitters with the AM modulation techniques, AM modulation. We are going to cover the AM, FM modulation and many other modulation techniques. With AM modulation techniques to give coverage to about 50 miles and only limited customers could get the service. This inefficient use of radio spectrum, this AM modulation is inefficient use of the radio spectrum coupled with the state radio with state of tech, of radio technology at that time severely limited the system capacity so it was very limited a solution to this capacity problem emerged during the 50s and the 60s when researchers at the bill labs developed the cellular concept and we are going to study what's the cell concept cellular concept in 19 73, Martin Cooper, a Motorola researcher and executive, made the first mobile telephone call from handheld subscriber equipment. In 1983, the first analog cellular system developed in Chicago, USA. So, before 1983, it's called before the first generation. All wireless communications were voice-centric and used analog systems with single side band modulation, single side band modulation. After 1983, all wireless communications were voice-centric, were voice-centric. In, before that, in 1966, Bell Labs had made the decision to adopt analog systems. As we mentioned ba back there, in the first point, uh, that it all used to be analog systems. In 1966, Bell Labs had made a decision to adopt analog systems for high capacity mobile system, because at that time, the digital radio system were very expensive to manufacture. An analog system with FM radio was chosen, but after 1983, the U.S. cellular system was named AMPS, Advanced Mobile Phone Service. Advanced Mobile Phone Service. AMPS was called first generation or 1G at the time. After seven years in the 90s, during this period, all wireless communications were voice-centric. European GSM and North America IS-54 were digital systems using TDMA multiplexing. Since AT&T was, was divested in 1980, no research institute like Bell Labs could develop an outstanding 2G system as it did for the first for the first generation system in North America. IS-54 was not a desirable system and was abandoned. 
Then, GSM was named 2G at the time when 3G was defined by ITU in 1997. Thus, we could say that, this is very important guys, we could say that moving from 1G to, G, to 2G, move, we could say that moving from 1G to 2G means migrating from the analog system to the digital system, migrating from analog system to the digital system. Keep this in mind. 2.5G in 1995, like five years from the previous bullet point, all the wireless communications are namely are mainly sorry all the wireless communications are mainly for high capacity voice with limited data service limited data service the cdma called division multiple access system using 1.5.25 megahertz bandwidth so keep this in mind the bandwidth was 1.25 the CDMA system using 1.25 MHz bandwidth was adopted in the United States at the same time European countries enhanced GSM to GPRS and age systems. So this book is an American reference. On a shy way it may sometimes mentions European but it will never mention Asian. Keep this in mind. All scientific books are biased in a way or another. After four years from that date, in this generation, the third generation, 3G, the wireless communication platform has voice and data capacity. 3G is the first international standard system released from ITU. In contrast to previous generation systems, 3G exploits WCDMA, Wideband Code Division Multiple Access technology. It used 5 MHz bandwidth, 5 mega, more than 4 times the previous one. Or in fact, it's 4 times the pre previous one. The bandwidth in the 3G is four times higher than the bandwidth of the 2.5G. 3G operates in both frequency division duplex, FDD, and time division duplex modes, TDD. So we are going to cover these FDD and TDD during the class. Thus, we could say that by migrating from 2G to 3G, this is important, this is just like a conclusion. When it say we could say it's a conclusion, we could say that by migrating from 2G to 3G systems, we have evolved from a voice-centric systems to data-centric systems. Voice-centric systems to data-centric systems. 4G. This is the current one. 5G is the future. 4G. 2013 till this moment, 4G is a high speed data rate plus voice system. It's not just a voice system, it's not just a data rate, it's a high speed data rate plus a voice system. There are two 4G systems. The first one is the United States has developed the WiMAX. WiMAX is an abbreviation for Worldwide Interoperability for Microwave Access. U.S. has developed the WiMAX system using orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. Orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. I think we are going to cover this con this concept during the class. Evolving from Wi-Fi. So the WiMAX is evolved from the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi that we use in our home. Same standard. That was the first one. The second one or the other is the LTE system. The LTE system. Uh, the LTE system that was developed after WiMAX, technology of LTE and that of WiMAX are very similar. So they are close in technology. They are very similar. The bandwidth of both systems is 20 megahertz. Four times more than the 
3G bandwidth. Okay. The major cellular operators are favorable to LTE and most countries around the world have already started issuing licenses for 4G using current development LTE system and we are using it. The states are using it and many con we are using it in only earth in many countries. The cost of licensing through auction is very high, still licensing is very high. Thus, we could say that migrating, this is another conclusion, okay? We could say that migrating from 3G to 4G means a shift from low data rates for internet to high speed data rates for mobile video. So it's a shift in speed, okay? 3G to 4G. The future, uh, fifth generation, 2021, I think it might be more than 2021, maybe 2022, 2023. 5G is still to be defined officially by standardization bodies, so it's not defined officially yet by the time of writing this book five years ago. In 2015. What I heard now in news, it's, it's been defined officially, but not adopted only in limited places and limited cities. One of them is Wuhan, the Chinese city. 5G, it will be a system of super high capacity, super high capacity and ultra high speed data with new design requirement tailored toward energy elicited system and reduced operational expenditure for operator. So it's going to be faster and cheaper, faster and cheaper. It saves energy and saves or reduce operational expenditure مصروفات التشغيليه for operators for those companies who operate or provide the service in this context في هذا السياق 5G in sages not only one invented technology but a technology ecosystem of wireless networks working in synergy to provide a seamless communication medium to the end user. So 5G is not only one invented technology, it's not only one and no technology, but a group a technology ecosystem of wireless networks a group of wireless networks working in synergy in harmony in collaboration to provide a seamless communication medium to provide a communication medium that's really smooth to the end user to people to the users Thus, we can say that this is the conclusion again. Moving from 4G to 5G, uh, this is not, uh, this didn't happen yet. It's not a fact, it's not a reality yet, it's a future. So they are predicting that moving from 4G to 5G means a shift in design paradigm. Design paradigm from a single discipline system to a multi-discipline system. الانتقال من الجيل الرابع إلى الجيل الخامس يشكل طفرة أو نقلة في النموذج التصميمي النموذج ديزاين بارادايم يعني النموذج التصميم طريقة تصميم السيلولر سيستم حيث كان سنجل ديسبلين سيستم وأصبح ملتي ديسبلين سيستم كان نظام أحادي أحادي التخصص أصبح نظام متعدد التخصص وبهذا تنتهي المقدمة على التطور 
and mobile communication. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.